that the main source of the darkness in Conrad's novel is to be found in the heart of man is a given. This darkness, the capacity for greed, cruelty and self-aggrandisement, gives rise to the colonialism the book describes and to Kurtz's monstrous behaviour. Man is a fallen creature, after all, so far so obvious, but there is another heart of darkness that is not so often taken into account, one that is even more disturbing in its implications, and that is the darkness lying in nature, outside of man, lying in the universe itself, as experienced through the landscape of Africa. The jungle, it turns out, is not neutral. As the narrative progresses in a similar manner to a horror story, the jungle is presented more and more as an active malevolent force. Marlowe's first descriptions of Africa as he sails down the coast are already foreboding. All along the formless coast, bordered by dangerous surf, as if nature herself had tried to ward off intruders. In and out of rivers, streams of death in life, whose banks were rotting into mud, whose waters, thickened into slime, invaded the contorted mangroves, that seemed to writhe at us in an extremity of an impotent despair. Nowhere did we stop long enough to get a particularised impression, but the general sense of vague and oppressive wonder grew upon me. It was like a weary pilgrimage amongst hints for nightmares. Just a few pages further on he is starting to take the hint. Could we handle that dumb thing, or would it handle us? I felt how big, how confoundedly big was that thing that couldn't talk, and perhaps was deaf as well. Marlowe persistently describes the jungle in terms of its vastness, its silence, and its oppressiveness. He says of the stillness that it did not in the least resemble a peace. It was the stillness of an implacable force brooding over an inscrutable intention. It looked at you with a vengeful aspect. It is anything but a romantic view of the natural world. It is a rather Darwinian and godless one, reminding us of the blind will proposed in the philosophy of Schopenhauer or the imminent will in the work of Thomas Hardy. Man is a part of nature and thereby capable of its brutality, but he is also separated from it by the virtue of his consciousness. Consciousness allows him to know the existence of good and evil and have the ability to choose one or the other. The jungle tests to destruction man's resistance to the temptation of evil with its playful paw strokes. Even such a strong-willed character as Kirk's is no more than a tree swayed by the wind after the jungle has found him out. Marlowe returns to civilization, but as we know, having accompanied him on his journey into the nightmare, it has only surfaced deep. Indeed, he describes Brussels, the city at the centre of his journey, as a whited sepulchre, a sepulchral city. The rot is already there, but merely painted over. The narration ends back on the Thames, a safe home territory, but even here the knowledge that has been gained haunts us. The darkness is not just within ourselves, but also out there, and we seem fated to encounter it. The tranquil waterway leading to the uttermost ends of the earth flowed sombre under an overcast sky, seemed to lead into the heart of an immense darkness.